Because someone special is in town apparently. <laughs> Right, let's just leave us here while it's only slightly disturbing, shall we? I did something really cool the other morning, which I'd rather get to now. So last week I was at a car event, but I mostly just played golf. This week I get to a, go to a proper car event where it's just, just cars. I don't know what's going to happen from here though. Literally, I'm getting into a car right now and finding out later. Last year there was loads of excitement around Jaguar's F-Pace, now that was their big first fully-fledged SUV car. Now there's a smaller version called the E-Pace, and I got to drive it around Joburg this last weekend. So we now know what we're doing. We're in the E-Pace. Please look at the, the dash and the speed. So I'm in the back at the beginning. There's Ellie and Melinda. Hi. These are my two driving compatriots today. Yes. Melinda's going first out of pure enthusiasm. And I'm putting my seatbelt on. It was so much fun to drive. We were on the highways, we were on the back roads, and then we ended up somewhere in the south, kind of spray painting a container, I think. But it was really cool. Like, it really is just it's so nippy. It's got so much tech inside. But one of the big highlights is just watching Melinda go live on Instagram, plus karaoke. I am with the Jaguar E-Pace launch, and this is awesome. Look at this. I kind of think Range Rover Evoque, but just with better lines, just a lot more modern and just really, really exciting. Anyway, it was then time to head home with Melinda behind the wheel again. Back to the studio and back to why Sia was getting so excited about meeting this very special person with that welcome. 
Yes, Gareth, ben. Gareth, there's a lot of talk outside about you guys meeting a special <laughs> guest today. On a scale of one to ten, how excited are you about meeting the special guest? Pretty, pretty excited. I think it's about eight, maybe eight and a half. Okay. Uh, he's one of those bucket list guests I've always wanted to speak to. But we've had a couple of those in the last few days, so I'm feeling very lucky. And um, we get to spend, uh, I think it's a few minutes, maybe up to 15, 20 minutes, maybe even half an hour with David Beckham. Uh, how are you going to meet him? Like, like have you thought of you going to shake his hand? Like, I, how's it going to go down? I, have not, I haven't thought about that stuff. That's the stuff Sia thinks about. I'm thinking about what to ask him that's going to be interesting to have an answer to. Okay. I don't, I don't really know. Maybe I'll greet him by just shaking his hand like a normal person would. Alan, everyone's getting really excited about meeting David Beckham. Have you met him? Twice. Twice? Mm. And how did you greet him? Did you just shake his hand? Did you go for a bro hug? Hello, nice to meet you, my brother. Good to see you. How are you doing? But just a handshake. And I met Victoria. Yes, yes, you shake a person's hand. What would you do? I actually double shake. No, well, it's just that Sia was, Sia's got a plan. Gareth's you know, just like got asked. Like it's I've seen much hotter in my life. What are you worried about? <laughs> Alan, around you a lot. I know. Oh, Hi, Nathan. If you were to meet David Beckham, would you be really excited? Not particularly. <laughs> Maybe his wife. Do you feel you have to say straight things around Alan out of protection? <laughs> it is my armor that I gallantly wear. Shut up, Nathan. You can catch the podcast that Gareth had with David Beckham below in the descriptions. And no, CA wasn't arrested and he wasn't given a restraining order. So on to the Bounce Show this week. And it was a great show because Ray Wexel was back, the ex-athlete sports marketing man. Now, with him, he brought an exciting young sprinter called Tando Roto. Now, Tando is, well, he's run sub-10 twice. He's an exciting, exciting talent. Plus, he's also the vice principal of the Puma School of Speed below Mr. Usain Bolt. And he also had with him his coach, Henny Creel. This dude was just so fascinating. Rugby background, athlete, athletics uh, coach now. This is one of those must, must listen to podcasts. Right, this week there were many contenders for this feature, but it had to obviously stay within the SA vs Australia test series. So the tweet, the person this week who's going to cop all the flag, that's Werner Philander, because he said, Good morning, all my tweeps. Waking up this morning to a lot of Twitter craziness as my account got hacked and someone posted a nice little article on my behalf. Sorry for all the drama or entertainment caused by the looks of it. Have a great day, all. Now, <laughs> this whole my account's been hacked thing, we've seen politicians do it, actors, uh, all kinds of people have, have played this whole my account got hacked chestnut. So if you didn't see the hack tweet, basically this was it. Um, yeah, Philander was just going about the fact that Steve Smith was obviously milking the situation. There really wasn't much in it. And, uh, well, the tweet sounded like sincere and genuine and maybe from a guy who had a couple of drinks or I don't know. I, <laughs> anyway, let's not get into if it was hacked, if it was not hacked. Let's as always get into the responses from this. So first up, we've got Caleb and Caleb says, when your account, okay, when your account is hacked, the hacker changed your email, act your access as well. It doesn't take you five minutes after waking up to restore your account. Your account. Hashtag see beyond the lies. Interesting, Caleb. Roach. <laughs> I think even this is even. More, I think this is even more realistic. Here we go. We've got a pile of steaming shit. That's what AK thinks of this. <laughs> Simon says B is for bullshit. Yeah, I don't think people are going to be sympathizing with Vern here. Uh, that's. That's just mean, Nathan. Matt says, sure pal, I also get pissed on box wine and vent on social media. It's all good. <laughs> Rupert wants to contest this by saying, please unpack why you reckon Vern drinks box wine. <laughs> Further to that, his pot belly would suggest beer, no? Uh, Matto says, haha, hacked, sure bud. Own up to it. We all drunk text. Yeah, I think there's a thread here. We all, yeah. Apologize for your name as well, please. Vernon. Fuck, that's a shit name. <laughs> Coming from a guy whose name rhymes with bitch. That's quite big. Dave. It's a very weak man that is afraid to own his own thoughts. Deep Dave. Probing. 
Caleb again says, what a load of bullshit. Own your shit. A lot of shit. Do you know how difficult it is for someone to hack into your Twitter account? You compare Smith to trying to win a penalty in football? Well, guess what? You just got caught out for simulation. Embarrassing. Caleb's taking this very seriously. Johnny Q, make sure you shoulder charge Smith and Warner properly next test. Knock the fuckers out. Sorry, a lot of swearing in this feature this week. It's not me. It's not me. Um, Amulius, there's an interesting name. Amulius is thinking that uh, there's more to this and Vern's got a, a bit of a reputation. Saying, uh, bringing up the old thing about Vern being fine for ball tampering. Yeah, Amulius. Andrew says, haha, South Africans, it's never your fault, is it? You've got an excuse for everything. Shake Town fires back, no. Australians are always involved in these scaffolds, and it's never your fault. Lol, bunch of crybabies. Sean says, absolute horseshit. What fools do you take people for? You, you clearly wrote the ridiculous tweet, and now you've seen how outlandish it is, and the backlash you've concocted a lie to try and backtrack on it. I think it's past you, Sean. Sporting Truth, same spelling mistakes in the original post as there are in the explanation. No way was there hacking. Uh, Tanvir does point out the obvious, of course, that nothing is deleted on Twitter. And there you go, you see the original tweet. Did he get hacked? Did he not get hacked? I don't know. <laughs> Who hacks? I mean... <laughs> Just keep taking wickets, Vern. Just keep taking wickets. That's all we care about right here. Away from the dodgy tweets, the Masters have done something amazing. They've put old final round broadcasts on YouTube. Oh, this is like, I've been waiting for this for years. You have to check it out. Absolutely incredible stuff. That's it for this time on the Bounce Vlog. Next Friday, back to normal posting times. The last two weeks have been pretty hectic. So click the subscribe button, click the like button, and click the notification button. Click all of these things and you'll get more of the Bounce Vlog soon. I'm going to go sleep.